as all natural forces are controlled by supernatural powers from the time of sowing till harvest god's blessing is desired is a typical kinnodi ritual the deity is taken on a palanquin around the courtyard with all the devotees dancing and conversing with it life in kinnor is marked by the mutual existence of man and god It is the duty of God to see that there is everlasting peace in the village. Kinnor is a place of curious coexistence of Buddhism and Hinduism. Kinnor, a district in Himachal Pradesh, which is the Himalayan state of India, is surrounded by Tibet in the east, Lahul and Spiti in the north. Simla and Uttarkashi in the south Moving upstream along the river Satluj one comes across a gradual transition of Hinduism to Buddhism and so does the ecology from arid to semi arid and dry Kinnor had trade relations with Tibet, Yarkand and Ladakh. The Kinnoras used horses, donkeys, sheep and goat for carrying goods as well as for barter. But now that is a thing of the past. As most part of Kinnor is situated at an altitude of over 6000 feet, the inhabitants are naturally required to wear woolen garments throughout the year. To have their own regular supply of wool they started rearing animals like sheep and goat so that they could get uninterrupted supply of wool the river satluj originates from the southern face of kailash at a great height reaching the village kabo it meets the spiti river turning into a torrent a scene of awful sublimity Baspa is a feeder of the Satluj and people believe that these two rivers are brothers. When they first started flowing, it was agreed upon by them that whoever reaches the point of confluence, which is Karcham earlier, shall retain the name thereafter. Baspa being the younger was more boisterous and brought along with him all the paraphernalia of musical instruments. Whereas the river Satluj being the elder was more discreet and reached the point of confluence much ahead of his younger brother the concept of living in harmony with nature is of ancient origin indian religious texts literature folklore and legends down the ages bear testimony to not only an extraordinary regard for nature but even reverence for the natural resources like rivers forests and mountains they are venerated as the source of all human life long before temples came into being worship of trees had been widely prevalent in india the tree kalpa vriksha has the magical quality of being able to fulfill all desires It is not a tree with many special features but a symbolic representation of the divine potential of our vegetation. Vegetation adapts itself to the needs of the time 
and the land continues to grow forever. It is sufficient to fulfill all the natural needs of man. In our external experience, we can see the world in its plurality, but in our internal experience, we can perceive it as one. This ultimate reality has been termed God. As the trade with Tibet has come to an end, the people have resorted to cultivation. Vegetables are raised for the local market, while fruits like apples and pears are distributed for sale to different parts of the country. Wheat, barley and millet are grown in fields at high altitude. As there is not much rainfall, water is used from rivers or streams that originate from glaciers. Women play a vital role in shaping the economy of the district. Besides helping in agricultural activities like sowing seeds, harvesting of crops, collecting firewood, making hay, they also carry on with their daily household chores. Kinor's food habits are basic and simple. The staple diet is oglo, brass and barley. A thin paste of maize flour is prepared and spread on a hot pan and then baked. Rote is akin to an ordinary chapati. Kinnor is famous for its apples. Apples are not only in abundance, they have also brought prosperity to this region in recent years. Besides apples, grapes, apricots, neusa, walnuts and pears grow in large quantities. Anguri happens to be the most exquisite quality of spirit. As the name suggests, it is mainly extracted from grapes. The grapes are squashed and put together in a wooden jar along with water and kept for some weeks. The distillation is very interesting. The mixture is poured into a large metal container over a fire. The container is then covered with a stone and is made airtight with mud. Now, a small brass container is placed over the stone. Two rubber pipes, one bringing in cold water and the other drawing out hot water are placed in the brass container. And through the third pipe comes out the wine, Nguri. The flavor depends on how well the wine is brewed and how well it is brewed depends on the master brewer, the Kinori woman. So 
priceless is the brewing skill that the woman who has mastered it commands great respect in the Kinori community.